Hello? Wendy, what's the deal, Mom? Hey. Yo, I, I, I called you last year, right, to tell you that my supervisor was coming at me and I wanted to splash all up in her. Yes, I remember. And my wife took up my job with my then fiance. Yes. I just found out this morning that my supervisor is pregnant. With Damn me. you, I told you not to do it when you called here. So now you're calling back asking me what to do? I rem- You know what? Of all the telephone calls I get, and there are some people who I remember their actual situation, you're one of them. We even made your uh, telephone call into a promo. Do you ever hear it on the radio? I hear it. I know it's flashing all up in there, yeah, and I did and- that, and, you know, I'm in trouble. I don't know what to do now. Should I tell my girl, wife now, what's up? Because I can't really trust this board not to say nothing because she all happy now. Listen, this is your fault. This is your fault. You called me before this even went down. You told me that the attraction was there. I said, don't do it. Now you went on and you made your girl your wife and you got your supervisor pregnant. Well, you need to start talking to your wife, plan on a divorce. And um, as for your job, she's now got you by the coolions, boy. You, Your life is completely run by women. I know. Uh, that's a, you know I don't know what to do. Yo. I mean, and, and she's not even considering handling her business. Not at all. Not at all. She, she's off the hook. She's 42 years old and she's open. I'm 32 and she's got a younger man and she's feeling real, real, she, real good about ne- herself. And she never had kids? She got one kid that's like 25. Oh, this is her chance to recapture her youth. That's what I'm saying. I don't know, yo, I don't know what to do. Pay your, pay your child support and get you a nice little bachelor pad because those two things are going to be very germane to your happiness. All right, Wendy. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Bye. I mean, what was I supposed to say? His phone conversation, his phone sounded a little bit muddled or whatever. I'm sorry that, that uh, you know, but what the hell? When he called a year ago, he's talking about splashing off in my boss. Ain't the problem, he said. We play it sometimes on the rewind of the show. Well, now it's a problem. That'll learn you. Dear Wendy. My question to you is about the Laugh Factory. Oh, yeah, because it's Wednesday, because it's the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience at the Laugh Factory in Times Square, New York City, where I do it every Wednesday night. And the question that this person has is, um, do you have to buy tickets online or can you buy them at the door? Secondly, I'm a white girl with a white boyfriend and was wondering if I bring him down tonight. Will I feel out of place or is it a mixed crowd and what should I wear? (laughs) No, white girl, come on. Everybody's there. Black, white, Puerto Rican, Indian, Asian. It's uh, like uh, the United Nations in that piece. Uh, Old people, young people. It's a nice mix of everybody. And um, you can buy your tickets at the door. Although reservations are always good. You know, I mean, you know, if you call directory assistance for the Laugh Factory in Times Square, you know, call up, you know, let them know you're coming down. But, you know, by and large, just come to the door. It's at 8th Avenue and 42nd Street. The parking, if you're going to be driving, is uh, right next door. And um, doors open up at 8 o'clock. And the jokes start about 8.45 or 9 o'clock. So I'll see you there, okay? Yep. And no, you won't feel out of place. As long as you don't sit in Capone's line of fire. Then again, if you sit in Capone's line of fire, I don't care if you're black with a black man. You, you'll st- you know, he's still going to get you. You know, it's just a thing, and it's all in fun. And the more drinks you have, the more fun you will have. And she signs off ready to laugh. And as far as what you wear, whatever you're wearing right now, I mean, unless you're working in a stiff shirt office, in which case, you know, you might want to loosen up a little bit. I got on jeans and a T-shirt and and some boots, you know. Um, And she she goes on to say, on a different note, As I mentioned previously, I've been listening to you for over a year now, and I'm sick of these women calling or faxing about getting pregnant and baby's daddy drama. I can't understand what is wrong with these people. Haven't they heard of birth control or, of course, abortion? I'm 27 years old. I have no kids. But I know if I were to get pregnant anytime soon, I'd be running to the doctor. And I'm pro-choice, I'll say. I wish these people would stop being stupid and use some protection and shut the F up and deal with their situations that their stupid asses got themselves into to begin with. Well, white girl, it sounds to me like you got enough fire in you to handle all the jokes tonight. And and you might need a drink. So I'll see you tonight. Okay, good. Um, Dear Wendy. 
I need some advice. I'm a fan of yours from West Palm Beach, Florida. Well, my cousin came in from out of town. I haven't seen my cousin in eight years. He was down in South Beach on winter vacation from New York. He and I were always cool, but uh, we are just two different people. He let, uh, let me get to the point. He is hip hop. And I'm more conservative. When we talk, everything about him is hip-hop, from the way he dresses to the way he talks. But he is educated with a bachelor's degree. He is a do-gooder worker. He is a do-gooder working with the troubled youth and has that personality that on the surface seems to be able to get along with anyone. Well, Wendy, I'm gay. And that's one of the reasons that we haven't seen each other. Because if I left... Because I left my hometown of Lakewood, New Jersey to explore the world and most importantly, explore myself. When I saw him, he started asking me about girlfriends and kids and I'm way past all that BS. I mean, I'm confident in my sexuality and don't feed into the stereotypes that he may have or not have about gay people. But still, I didn't tell him that I'm gay. I just didn't want any weirdness between us. I mean, it's funny. I'm just... A private person who doesn't share much anyway. But I want him to be close with me. But me telling him could make us more separate. So my question to you is, should I call him up and tell him I'm gay? Or should I just keep it to myself and pretend that I'm just another straight guy? Something tells me that if I tell him, it might be eight more years before I see him again. Signed, Nameless. Tell him. I mean, why are you going to play along? You know the next movie he's going to make the next time he sees you is, come on, let's go pick up some girlies in the club. And then you're going to have to play a role that you're not. I understand the whole issue of being a private person. But for something like this, if you don't see him for another eight years, it's his loss. You sound like a perfectly nice person. And by the way, so does he. Just perfectly nice and perfectly closed-minded. So I would tell him. Because you're about to be dragged into heterosexual activities, and that's not you. You're right with yourself. That's why you left Lakewood, New Jersey. If he's not right with you, send him where? Back there. That's all. (sighs) Okay, Wendy, I've been out of the loop for... Wait, let me hold on on that one. Oh, by the way, Nivea um, is married to Little Wayne. That that information that I had, they had the wrong name. I thought I told you all that they got married, and she's pregnant with, I believe, twins. Philly Kid says, um, Philly Kid sent this in. He says, Wendy Nivea was engaged to Little Wayne like a couple of years ago, but she's married to another cat. Who's the other cat? The guy who I originally said. Why are we spending so much time on talking about somebody who apparently you all don't care about? She ain't at the top of the charts. No, she's not. But Philly Cat goes on. Philly Kid goes on to say, and I've noticed that Fifty can't uh, sell any records without controversy because to me, the new ish is corny. I fell in love with Get Rich or Die Trying. The new ish doesn't compare at all, and I was all turtled up while I was listening. <laughs> I guess, you know, being turtled up. Yeah, it does, I guess, get you into the music more. It's like, damn, I don't like this. Let me get with the turtle. And then all of a sudden, you snap your neck to anything on the turtle. So if, you, if you're not snapping your neck turtled up listening to it, then, dude, I guess you wasted your, what is it, 15 bucks for a CD? Or is it up to 20 now? I don't know. I'm out of the loop. I haven't bought a, 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 an album since Foxy Get Off. <laughs> you shut up. <laughs> Oh, man, oh, man, Chavez, I can't wait to talk to you about Oprah and Stedman and Jamie Foxx. I can't wait for our guest to come in during the Hour of Truth. His name is Corey Harris, and his new book out is called Slow, which is, uh, you know, Corey was a football player with the Detroit Lions, and I do have some stats on him. Thanks for sending them over. Um, Slow stands for Secret Lives of The wives, meaning the wives of the NFL. And he is going to spill the tea. As best he can during the hour of truth. I mean, the rest of the tea doesn't need to be spilled. I got a copy of the book. I am definitely, I am on this book. I am so on this book. This is up next for me in my reading. Anyway, keep it here and call me. Advice Hour continues next. 
Wendy, man. I'm 46 years old. I haven't had any in three years. My wife cut me off three years ago because of her serious mental deficiencies, and I've still been a faithful husband. The Wendy Williams Experience.